Looking for seven. Got seven. Wow. A 7-10 split! I can't miss. Can't miss.
Hey you guys, it's Frank the Tank, and that was the promotion part two. So, um, I gotta say, you know, um, even if I wasn't doing this series where I'm reviewing all these Belmo bowling balls, not including any of the overseas ones, uh, this video was going to happen one way or the other. Um, at the uh, but way before, um, I only had one reason, and that was because of the part one video turning out the way it did. I was heavily bothered by it. Uh, it my form, my skill level, it was all just horrible. The scores were pretty good for the way I was bowling at the time, but you know, I was like, dude, this video is in dire need of a part two. So I was going to get to it, and then uh, with the uh, release of the Trend 2 coming along in a few days, it's currently the 25th, I think it releases on the 29th, uh, I thought, you know what, why don't I build up to that by reviewing the Timeless, the Drive, the Promotion, and the Trend? So I found a second reason for uh, re uh, you know redoing the Promotion video. So now I can officially put this one to bed. I am now relieved, uh, uh, or at least a little bit more relieved, because I no longer have to think about uh, that part one video being the only promotion video that I ever did. I now have this one. It's a whole hell of a lot better. I am satisfied, and I can put this one to bed. Okay, so let's talk about what I saw out there in those three games. And out of those three games, I learned one big thing, and that is that this ball is better off used playing the lanes like normally you know like at my at my normal pace uh, because you know that game three was a, just a clear indication that yeah this ball is not really good for hooking the entire lane with uh, you know like to go from game two to a 266 down to a 215 in game three like that that's an obvious indicator right there I mean uh, I can't remember what happened that entire uh, game three but I do know I remember I swear I hit the pocket really good yet I was met with a couple 10 pins and I didn't see that happening with the drive um, if you guys go back and you look and then you look at this one you'll see that like the drive carried way better through the pins than the pro motion did so yeah I guess uh, this ball uh, is better off used at you know playing normally rather than hooking the entire lane I think that was the big thing here uh, so having said that I think that I easily could have topped uh, the series that I got with the drive use uh, uh, with this promotion ball uh, you know that unfortunately that game three was obviously the killer here so if if I played game three at my normal pace I easily could have gotten way higher than the 735 series that I got with the drive no doubt about that but you guys know me it's part of the of my routine for these videos game one and two play normally game three hook the entire lane to see what the ball can do its capabilities to see how it uh, it you know gets around the corner how it comes back and uh, yeah uh, also I will say I mean it wasn't totally the ball obviously this was a, a big portion of this is my fault because I'm the one who's enabling the ball to do what it does when it gets uh, down to the back part of the lane um, I also got to say that you know hooking the entire lane is kind of one of my weaknesses I'm still not 100% really good at it I mean if I was I would easily be able to get the scores that I'm getting if I was playing at my normal pace right so yeah I mean that's also going into why this is my fault I mean I did what I could I you guys could clearly see uh, when I'm up at the top of the swing I'm like going like that with my wrist you know to like cup the wrist and really get my hand underneath the ball because I knew this ball isn't like totally like insanely aggressive like the drive was to get back around the corner so I knew I was gonna have to put a lot of hand on it otherwise the ball would just you know quit when it gets around the corner and just like make like a L shape rather than a full-on check mark type of shape and speaking of the way that this ball shapes down lane it's obviously something different it's something brand new which is obviously what uh, they were going for I thought it was like, uh, like if I had to compare it to another ball, I would say it's like an Idle Pro, but a step up. Like the Idle Pro, it, it, the way it shapes down lane, it's very, very similar, uh, at least from what I've seen. I mean, it doesn't like curve as aggressively, but it still has that massive, you know, push. You know, what do they call that? Continuation, I think is what they call it. That's what that ProMotion does, except the difference obviously being that it can like curve way more aggressively than the Idle Pro, but it still has that, you know, very like strong continuation uh, when it hits uh, the pins. It's really, really cool to see. But it makes sense why that's happening because, you know, if you look at the, uh, that what is that, the piston core that they put in the ball when it's turning end over end, you know, uh, those things, I don't know what we want to call them, they're like forcing each other you know to go end over end and that's what creates that strong continuous 
looking effect after you know the ball changes um, after it changes direction. Another thing that feeds into why the Pro Motion acts the way it does, apart from that piston core, is spec. The uh, cover that they put on this bowling ball is spec solid reactive. Um, I think if I'm not uh, if I remember that cover stock did not sit well with the public. I mean, uh, we saw it on the Crux Prime, and it does almost what that Pro Motion does, uh, except obviously the Crux Prime, uh, you know, is an asymmetrical ball. The Pro Motion is a symmetrical. So that with the Crux Prime, it obviously shapes more aggressively and way earlier down lane, but it still has that snappy like effect, like the Pro Motion does. So that's also the reason why we see what we see out of the Pro Motion. But you know, the Crux Prime doesn't necessarily have that strong continuous type of push. Uh, that the pro motion does because obviously two different cores here that we're talking about but yeah spec solid reactive is what they decided to put on this ball and I don't really know exactly why it didn't sit well with people but I know for a fact that that is you know uh, it, it just it it didn't do so well with uh, a, a lot of people and that is why we only saw it on the crux prime the pro motion if it was on another ball then I don't know about it but I'm pretty certain that I only ever saw spec solid reactive on those two bowling balls and I never saw it again so yeah I mean um, I I don't know uh, uh, how I feel about it I mean it 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 was okay but you know it's obviously not something that I would prefer to be on a ball okay so now the next thing that I want to talk about are the scores so that is the final thing we'll discuss here and uh, unfortunately I fell short and I could not top what I did with the drive uh, so I guess uh, score wise the drive still reigns supreme I believe it was a 735 series that I got with the pro motion I get a 709 but again I'm not I'm not going to complain here I mean I still got a 700 series with the pro motion so anything with that, that 700 or over is always you know good uh, the timeless uh, so far still stands as the only ball in this series that did not get over 700 as I mentioned which it you know makes sense because uh, like I mentioned in the timeless video and a little bit in the drive video the the way it rolls it just doesn't match up well with me it was it caused me quite the struggle you know that that skid was the killer for me but I love that, that it also had a heavy you know that heavy roll that you see after it changes direction and we see that in the pro motion too but obviously you know the way it changes direction uh, is way quicker a lot more snappier I want to say or at least it it's not totally snappy but it's it's leaning more towards being snappy um, and yeah, I mean, uh, I did not expect this. I mean, I did not expect for the drive to be the one that is uh, better for me, but it is. Uh, so, I mean, um, if I had to, uh, obviously score-wise, the drive is winning, but if I had to uh, say which w ball out of these three so far that I have reviewed, which one rolls better, I got to give it to the drive as well. I mean, uh, because of the way it rolls, the way it changes directions, it doesn't have that uh, heavy ball roll like the Timeless and the Pro Motion has. But despite that, you know, it felt like the easiest one to strike with. It felt like the easiest easiest one to score high with. It, I don't know. It's so weird. I was discussing with somebody about the, the drive and how it was, you know, not so great and how it didn't uh, sit well with the public. Um, it, it's crazy how that ball that I guess uh, people like the least out of all the Belmo balls, I ended up doing so well with. So uh, that's uh, very interesting. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen when we move to the trend. That is going to be interesting because I imagine that one is going to be very good because finally we have something that's Pearl Reactive. The Timeless being a hybrid, the Drive also being a hybrid. Uh, this pro motion being a solid and finally we move into something pearl reactive and if you guys have kept up with me the past couple months I've made it clear that pearl reactive is something that works well for my game so um, we're gonna see what happens so I guess uh, that's all I really have to say on this pro motion quite a bit to say but really but uh, yeah uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that that was the pro motion part two we now move on to the trend. I will see you guys there in a few days.